views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Patty Hunter and my show today is Patty's Page. Today's guest is Chris Barnikoff. Hello Chris. Hello. Hello. Welcome to my show. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to be talking about HHS. Now what mandate? Now what is that? What is the HHS mandate? Well when you say HHS mandate there are actually hundreds of them. Which one are we? Because the the Obamacare Act, or the Affordable Care Act, as it's called, has about 3,000 places in there where it says the secretary shall determine this oh. or that. So there, the act just gives incredible amounts of power to the secretary of HHS, which is Health and Human Services, oh. and also to the Treasury Secretary and the uh, Labor Secretary. Uh, but the one when, when people talk about the HHS mandate, they're usually referring to the one involving contraceptive and actually abortion services. Yeah. So normally if, if, if you hear HHS mandate, uh, most people are mean by that, the, the contraceptive mandate. Um, why do we feel that the HHS mandate infringes on religious liberty? Well, the, the Catholic Church in particular teaches that contraception is morally wrong. Right. My Lutheran Church uh, does not believe that, but this mandate is so broad that it even includes some drugs which, which actually cause abortion. Mm. These are the so-called morning after pills. Yeah. Oh. There's been some controversy about that, but um, it's our understanding in the Lutheran Church, in the, in the Missouri Synod, I should say, that life begins at conception. Yes. And these morning after drugs uh, kill the fertilized egg. In other words, uh, you have a complete human being, or at least the, all the DNA for a complete human being, a living cell that will grow into a human, and these drugs kill it. So. We find that contrary to scripture right. and contrary to God's, God's law. Uh, and the, the mandate infringes on our belief by forcing us to do something that we consider immoral. And for the Catholics, it's even, it's even worse because uh, it also includes all sorts of contraceptives right. that they consider immoral. Mean the pill. Well, the, the mandate is extremely broad. It includes not just pills, not just medicines, sterilization, uh, all sorts of treatments. In fact, it, it covers every treatment that's okay. approved by the FDA as uh, safe. But it's not safe for the baby. It's not safe for the baby, no. <laughs> and, uh, I've, I've heard of cases where some abortions have been uh, botched and the woman would die from the hemorrhaging and all that. You know. And uh, why? D how did uh, HHS overcome the First Amendment? Oh my. Well, they overcame it in a couple of paragraphs of their decision, of their order. And they simply said that we have a compelling government interest in reducing health care costs and in achieving greater equality for women. Right. And the government said, we think this is more important than freedom of religion. So we, we think that saving, reducing health care costs is more important than the Constitution. Uh, 
the problem is well there are many problems you know but one of the one of the problems is they claim that this mandate will reduce health care costs but I've looked at that uh, that study I'm an economist I spent four decades in the federal government reviewing this kind of study uh, not contraception but economic studies. And I found this one very poorly done, very not at all convincing. So I, I believe that their claim that it will save costs is, is bogus. Yeah. So they're building this whole, this whole mandate. They're saying, you know, we have this government interest that's so compelling that we're going to overcome the First Amendment, you know, the first freedom, the first the first sentence in the First Amendment in the Bill of Rights. And the government says that's not as important as, as saving costs. But it's not going to save costs. To the extent that it reduces health care costs, it does it by eliminating children. From within all. Uh, it, by eliminating the costs of pregnancy and birth and even raising the child. Medical care for the first five years is included as one of the costs that they're saving. They're not saving this country, are they? Not saving the country, no. <laughs> I mean, how many babies have died now over the, since Roe versus Wade? Over 50 million? I think it's something like 50 million. It's, I mean, uh, that's a whole generation. That, yeah. You know, my Canada, where I'm from, one time we had 50 million people in our country. That's how many people, I don't know how many we have now, because it's been a while since I've been there, but that's how many people have been killed. And I can't, you know, they, they raise such a big stink for, you know, a murderer, either get the electric chair, or gas chair, whatever the word is. But killing babies, they don't get anything, they don't get punished. Well, most of this mandate is directed at preventing conception. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is their, their claim that this will save costs. Right. It's a very short-run claim. Right. Because even, you know, even from their viewpoint, even in terms of costs to the government, the way they save costs is by eliminating children. But if you eliminate children, you're eliminating future taxpayers That's right. and future productive citizens. Right. So, you know, we all know that, of course, children are expensive. It costs a lot to raise oh, a child. Oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> we are expensive. But we don't, that doesn't mean we, we save costs by killing them or by preventing their birth. Uh, that's a very short-sighted idea of cost saving. That, that is morally wrong. Well, it's ex very morally wrong, but, but I'm saying even, even by their argument that this, this mandate will save us costs, it's bogus. Uh, in the long run, it's going to cost more than it saves because we're going to lose all the production that these, these little children would have produced when they yeah. grew up. Taxes. Uh, plus all the taxes they're paying. Yeah. So it's... Uh, you know, even if you take even if you take the government's cost argument, it just doesn't hold up. What about uh, as we grow older, the ba boom babies? We're getting up there. We're in our el elderly now, and uh, there won't be babies, children taking care of the adults. Well, we already we already have with uh, Social Security and Medicare. Uh, we've killed so many babies. We've aborted so many babies right. that Social Security and Medicare are going to collapse, and they're going to collapse much sooner than than they would have because we have killed off the next generation of That's right. Social Security taxpayers. I mean, and the Religious Freedom Restore Restoration Act. How old is this? Who passed it? The Religious Freedom Restoration Act was passed by Congress in 1993, and what it does is it prohibits the federal government from burdening uh, freedom of worship, freedom of religion. 
I shouldn't say freedom of worship, but freedom of religion, the practice of religion. Right. And in this case, again, uh, HHS says it's more important for us to save money. And their, their second argument was that it's necessary for women to have free, free contraception because they bear a, uh, most of the burden of, uh, of pregnancy. Well, I guess they do, you know. <laughs> but um, the government's two arguments where we want to save costs and we want to make things more equal uh, by preventing women from getting pregnant. You know, this reminds me of China, one baby per family. Now this bit about uh, the girls being aborted more than the boys. That's happening right now as well. Well, that's right. That's become an issue uh, even in the United States recently, the uh, so-called gender selection that's right. abortion. That's bad. Uh, and that's, that's related to all these things. Um, the Lutherans and why are the Lutherans and others uh, mo just as concerned about uh, what's happening with HHS mandate? Isn't is just a Catholic issue? Or are the Catholics started out protesting against? Well, the Catholics are more directly involved. Uh, attacked, yeah. uh, in, assaulted, I suppose, uh, in that it affects more of their doctrine. They, they teach that all contraception is questionable or wrong. Um, but Lutherans are concerned because, in the first place, the mandate also includes these abortion-inducing drugs. Right. But in the second place, we need to stand up to defend the Catholics, right. because we know that if the government gets them, <laughs> they get they're going to come for us next time, or the time after next. So we need to defend the religious freedom of, of Catholics and of you know other, other people. We need to defend religious freedom of everybody. Um, and I'd, I'd like to think that even, even if this didn't involve abortion, that we would still stand up to defend the religious freedom of the Catholics. Their right to pray in public. Not just to pray, but to practice their to religion. Practice. See, the government, the government is trying to redefine, at least the, the current administration, is trying to redefine freedom of religion to mean freedom of worship. Mm -hmm. And what they mean by that is only Sunday morning, only inside your church, not more than an hour, one hour. Well, they don't say the one hour part, but they mean this only what you're doing in yeah. your actual worship service. But Catholics and Lutherans and most Christians have a much broader concept of that than that of what it means to practice their religion. So when Lutheran social services goes out and helps uh, a child or a mother or a family, we consider that practicing our religion. Right. You know, Jesus... Jesus commands us to do this. Right. And the Catholics have the same, same viewpoint, that when they go out and serve the poor or the sick or the aged, they are practicing their religion. When the government comes in and, and tries to say, you have to do it in a way that violates your fundamental beliefs. Yeah. That, that wasn't in the, the, um, the first commandment, second commandment, how many commandments, I forgot. Amendment. 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 First Amendment. The uh, First Amendment says uh, Congress shall not establish a religion or prohibit the free practice thereof. But Obama's trying to change that. Well, he's trying to, to narrow that down and confine it to inside the church building on Sunday morning. That is not right. No, it's not right. And this we, doesn't we sound like a that. democracy, does it? No, it doesn't. Well, <laughs> you know, the, the, the American public is overwhelmingly opposed to this, what? the entire law. Right. And um, the administration doesn't seem to care about that. So, Why um, 
Isn't this a war on woman? This uh, HHS mandate. Well, actually, you could argue that the HH, the mandate itself is a war on women. Yeah. And one of one of the examples of that is, as you mentioned earlier, these gender selection abortions. Yes. I mean, literally, where baby unborn baby girls are being killed because they're girls. Yeah. Now there's a war What's on women. What's with that? <laughs> there's a war on women. Uh, definitely. I but mean, that's that's something that uh, the other side. Uh, you know, Congress, the House, just considered this, and President Obama refused to support a bill outlawing gender selection abortions. Right. You know, he thinks that promoting abortion is more important than protecting unborn baby girls. And that's been a consistent position he's held, I think, his entire political career. I don't, I don't see any logic in it. These are human beings inside the womb, us, before we're born. And yet, he's killing them with Planned Parenthood. I should perhaps explain that what the, what the mandate is not about. What's it about? Not it's, about? It's not about prohibiting contraception. What it's about is making churches who don't believe in it, provide it and pay for it. Hospitals that are run by the Catholic, yes. private hospitals. That's um, so. Um, what we're saying is that uh, you know contraceptives, contraceptives are cheap, easily available. Yeah. That's not an issue. Um, the Catholic Church teaches that they're not. They're not right, and you shouldn't use them. Mm -hmm. But women have a, the choice of going out and buying them. Uh, they're cheap. They're readily available. That wouldn't. That doesn't change. What the mandate does is it forces us to pay for them. So we're not. We're not trying to argue here that women don't have a right to use contraceptives. What we're saying is we shouldn't be forced to pay for them. That's right. And the abortions. And, and the, uh, the, the abortion-inducing drugs are, the, of course, f from a Lutheran viewpoint, those are the worst, uh, the worst of it all. But, but there's a difference between saying, um, you know, you have the right to go buy uh, contraceptions if you wish, and I have to pay for it. <laughs> you know, those are two different questions. The mandate is, is the second one. It's saying that the churches, these religious institutions, and for that matter, a, uh, a Christian-owned business. Right. Uh, you know, suppose I have a, a, a um, printing <coughs> shop, and I'm a strong, let's say I'm a Catholic, and I own a printer, printing shop. Um, I shouldn't be forced to provide contraceptives through my employee health plan. Right. Because it violates my conscience. Right. So it's it's... It's not just the um, it's not just the churches and the church institutions that that should be protected here. It should be every everybody that uh, the freedom of conscience, not just for a Catholic hospital, but also for a Catholic, a good Catholic member who owns a business, or a good Lutheran who mm. owns a business. Right, or Baptist. Uh, we shouldn't be forced to do something that's against. Our belief, our belief, but he's not—he's not sensitive enough for it. It's not, you know, the government is not allowing us to be conscientious. They're—they're they're thinking for us. Aren't well, they? I'd say they're not allowing us to practice our religion. That's right. The, we're Which not, is not. They're not right. allowing us the free exercise of religion. Well, that doesn't sound like a d democratic country. Well, so what I don't <laughs> know what we're turning into, but it doesn't look—it doesn't look right. Well, that's why that's why we're having this uh, rally. This rally on when? Saturday, the June thirtieth. Right. Uh, it's ten a.m. downtown in Fort Wayne at uh, Fryman Square. Fryman Square. And across the country in June, uh, there have been a, over one hundred and sixty. I think it's up to one hundred and sixty-four now cities. Oh, yeah. In which similar rallies are being held. Um, 
against the HHS mandate. In March, the same organizations had uh, rallies in 143 cities across the country. Right. So this, in June, uh, this is a second wave. Mm -hmm. In Fort Wayne, we decided to hold ours a little bit later than the others because we wanted to try, try doing it on a, on a Saturday. Right. We had a lot of complaints last time that people wanted to come, but they couldn't get off work. So we're going to have this one on a Saturday morning. So they, today is the June the 8th, Friday. Which As we're, we're recording this, it's today's June recording. 8th, and today uh, these, these rallies are occurring right now as we're speaking. Throughout the nation. Across the nation, yes. And w since uh, we wanted to have it on Saturday, it's on the 30th of June here in Fort Wayne, right. Indiana. Um, how, how does the movement here relate to the national level? I mean, uh, we're just talking about that. Uh, the, the, the nation is against abortion. Are they starting to realize what's happening with the government, what they're doing to us, making us pay for something that we do not believe in? Is that, so the movement that we're doing here in Fort Wayne. Well, my understanding is that in each city, each city, yeah. The local rally is put together by local people from various organizations uh, who have just come together to organize these rallies. So it's very much of a grassroots thing. And it's a personal thing, too. Yes, and here in, here in Fort Wayne, uh, our rally is organized by just a group of people from various churches and various organizations who have come together uh, for this purpose. Yes. So... Um, there is no, you know, if this, if this battle continues, we might actually get ourselves organized someday. Yep. But at the moment, um, you know, it's just a group of, of people who are active in various churches, various denominations. Uh, we're coming together yeah. to have this rally because we, we all agree we think this is very important. We want to make our voices known and let others have a chance to make their voices known. So... Um do you have any inkling of how many people will be turning up for this rally on the 30th? I of have no June? idea. You know, in our in our March rally, I was hoping that we might have 100 people. Yeah. You know, and then it started raining. Oh. And we ended up with over 400 people in the rain. Oh. Mm -hmm. At the courthouse. So this time uh, we'll be at Fryman Square, 10 a.m. Saturday morning, uh, June 30th, and we'll see. Who knows? Do you know who the speakers are? Well, so our speakers, um, one of the most well-known around here is Pat Miller mm -hmm. from WoWo, the, from the Wo -Wo. talk show host from WoWo. Yeah. Uh, we're also having Fred Everett, yes. who's director of the Office of Family Services for the diocese. Mm -hmm. And uh, Laura Wigman, uh, a young gal just graduated from Hillsdale College. Right. But she's a great speaker. She won the state oratory contest for the uh, Indiana Right to Life oratory contest. So Indi uh, Allen County Right to Life is, as well as Lutherans for Life and other organizations pro-life are behind this. Those are, those are among the uh, organizations that yes. are, from which people are, you know, as actually, actually I suppose not the organizations themselves, but. But uh, people who belong. Leaders within them, yes, who, yes. who have uh, come together for this purpose. We haven't actually had time to organize anything, but um, anything permanent. So it's just an ad hoc group of leaders who have come together to organize these rallies. And um, grassroots, of course, which is yeah. good because yeah. that that's the only way to get things going. And my understanding is that's that's what's happened in each city across the country. So 165 cities, uh, 165 little grassroots groups that have come together uh, for this purpose. So what is your part in this, in this rally? Well, I'm one of the organizers. Um, I, I write things, so I've, I've written some of the materials. And, uh, to the churches? We will be sending out materials. Um, to each church here? To the... Uh, to local churches, yes, we'll, that How they might want to put in their bulletins. That's good, because we have a bu this bulletin, so you can be able to put in their uh, 
their, what do you call them? Pieces of paper you can put in their bulletins. Inserts, yes. inserts. Bulletin, bulletin Thank inserts, you. Yes. <laughs> I forgot that word. Anyways, uh, I'm a part of that group that's putting on this rally. And I find it very, very important, especially for our religious freedom and for the unborn. I'd like to thank you, Chris Barnikov, for coming on to my show. Thank You're you very me. kind to come. I hope I didn't ask you uh, questions that seemed... <laughs> oh no, these are, these are easy ones. <laughs> okay, because I wasn't quite sure how to ask some of them, but I'm glad I did. And I'd like to thank the audience for listening in, coming on my show. And uh, this is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. May we see you June the 30th at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And Fryman Square is Fr at the corner of, well, it's at Clinton and Main Street. Fryman Square is at the corner of Clinton and Maine. Maine. Okay, I've been there before. I'm sorry. That's where the Occupy was for a while. Yeah, I know, I know, I know that. So uh, thank you for coming on to my show, and uh, God bless, and hope to see you at the rally. <laughs>